Hello and welcome to Star Wars News and Weekly Comic Recap presented by Tales from the Dark Side. This week we're covering new comic release, Star Wars Dr. Afra number 11, where Afra gets her in for the big auction. And we learn why Marco has to keep reading that comic for now, anyway. In Star Wars High Republic number six, we'll discuss if this title has finally turned the corner, becoming interesting, or if we must continue to hope for something interesting in the next issue. <laughs> Speaking of High Republic, the writers of the high of the Star Wars High Republic novels virtually gathered round and gave us insight into their storyline goals, collaborations, and Star Wars inspirations. Hey, somewhere in the mix tonight, JJ has another It's a Trap for us with a character I've never heard of. You know, at this point, I think he's making them up, but hey, we keep going with it. Sometimes. Tops, re <laughs> Tops revealed its intentions for its 2021 Masterwork trading cards. We'll have opinions and some questions, and we'll review and talk about Bad Batch Episode 10, Common Ground, and will someone please pay off my debts? Let's get it going. <laughs> When are we going to quit calling it virtual, too? Like, it's just uh, the interwebs. Can we go back to that? Like, people are just on the interwebs talking <laughs> like, at this point. Like, it's not virtual anymore. It's kind of better because I'm sick of right old panel days, you know, when they had them on the panels and you could only hear one mm -hmm. person. And then somebody was like, <laughs> oh, thank yeah. you. Thank, thanks for that. Thanks for that insight. It's great. Okay. Or you were All so right. far away from the camera, you couldn't see who was who. And like, who's that talking? <laughs> right, 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 right. Um, what else do we got, Jedi? Well, I can do my intros to you guys. As you should. Do it. All right. <laughs> hey, speaking of writing novels, he plans to write a fact-based documentary novel entitled Han Shot First, Nothing Else Matters. It's Macho Man Marco. That's the truth. That is the truth. Now we're and, coinci and coincidentally, this panel panelist also plans to author a new book entitled I Said It First. But it really doesn't matter. <laughs> it's the guy behind the curtain, JJ Maxwell. Hey, hey. hey, he's still steaming about canceling dad jokes, but we calmed him down with some blue milk and Wookie cookies. Thank God, we're yeah, <laughs> Wookie cookies are a real thing in the Star Wars universe. You know, you learn a lot writing these intros. <laughs> Solo Wookie is here with crumbs in his beard. Bring back the dad jokes. Hey, when he gets a free minute, we get another video. He knows collecting and how we crave it, and his channel feeds that hunger in all of us. It's Pete Renovision. Hey, uh, this guy. Uh, hey, what about me? Go ahead. Sorry. Hey, this, guy, about you. <laughs> this guy wrote a very angry letter to Ancestry.com when the results <laughs> of his DNA when the results of his DNA test came back without a trace of metachlorians. <laughs> Still waiting on a reply to that letter, but yeah, that's me, Jedi Johnson 22. Something wrong there. Did you really do that? Uh, <laughs> hey, uh, speaking of Renovision, make sure you're over there at Renovision. He is doing a giveaway for 700, so make sure you're following him. Uh, sure. this is, I just want to give this a uh, disclaimer. We should have probably done it where we had scroll. This is a tape show this week. We all have got uh, families and planets too. So if you see kids running in in the middle of it, just ignore them. Uh, it's daytime, which I was told, Dad, you don't. Go on the internet on the daytime. And I was like, well, yeah. today's the day it is. So, yeah, um, the water instead of the usual drink today. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So that's what we got going on. But we didn't want to leave you guys without it, even though the whole holiday is going on. Hopefully, everybody's having a great holiday, uh, Fourth of July and Independence Day. I, I don't even know what we're supposed to call anything anymore, but I don't care because Han shot first. Um, <laughs> so we'll start off with comic recaps. There's a, um, we only did two. You know, there was a second half to the the book that already came out of the the Luke Skywalker one, which oh, the you, yeah, yeah, which is fine. It was what we thought it was. Maybe it wasn't for you, so hopefully you read it. But like recovering something that we've already read three times, once in German and twice in English, I didn't feel like we needed to recover that. But <laughs> oh well. All right, we got. We did, and, and as Jedi mentioned in the intro, we do have the Doctor Afra, and I said if they kill him off, like I'm just, I'm done. Oh, but before we do that, pickups, pickups. You guys gotta give uh -huh. me pickups. Oh, yep. All right, Jedi, give us the pickups, pickups, pickups. 
All right. Well, I've uh, I've only got two, I'm only showing two this this week, and uh, there's a reason why it's only two. So I have this. I don't know if the glare. Ooh. Oh, no. The uh, nice. Princess Leia Star Wars 40th Anniversary six inch, and I also have the Darth Vader. Whoops, here we go. Ooh, Darth ooh. Vader Star Wars or Empire Strikes Back six inch. Nice. Um, so yeah, just a quick uh, rant on that. These are two out of six uh, <laughs> six inch <laughs> figures that I ordered from Amazon. Uh, the other four came came beat to hell. One of them, I had a Darth Vader uh, Star Wars 40th that the bubble was almost completely falling off of it. So uh, lesson learned for the Jedi this week is ordering collectibles from Amazon, uh, especially anything fragile or might get bent, probably not the best advice. It's a gamble. Uh, probably. Yeah. Yeah, don't We're talking batting that. average. It's not that bad. You go two for six on the day. That's a good day. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Bat thirty. Well, that's yeah. usually that's usually lower than I say Amazon. Usually I'm at like you know if you're forty percent on Amazon, like forty five ish. That's usually where you're hitting around. So you're now, a little bit lower than the, that. Uh, so. People at the UPS store when I was in there twice a day returning things, they were like, oh, you're coming back. I'm like, yeah, uh, Amazon Prime Days is when they get rid of all their broken crap. So here it is. Yeah. Some more of it. So the, no fights with the garage floor this week? And it didn't... No. No, okay. no I, I can't classify this as a, a Jedi junk equation because it wasn't my fault. It is, though. Like, hey, listen, as much as I, I don't buy a lot off of Amazon because I know how it goes, like, it do know it's a gamble. If you like to gamble, like you know, all these guys are good to go out there like to gamble with books or gamble with cars or get so it's buying off Amazon, man. That's all you have to do. Just just throw it in there. Well, and, you can uh, return it. It's easy. To, I mean, it's a safe, yeah. it's a safe bet, really. Because well, if, it comes, if yeah. it comes messed up, you can well, return it. Yeah, if you're collecting, they're gonna do what they can to cut costs with the thinner and thinner and thinner cardboard. Well, you know what I don't understand is uh and, and I'll wrap it up with this because other people need to show off their stuff, but it just I don't know if there's a shortage of wrapping supplies out there. Maybe that's a trickle down from COVID or whatever. But I mean, used to if you order a brick from Amazon, that thing's gonna come triple wrapped and freaking uh bubble wrap with styrofoam bubbles. And now suddenly this these you know, these figures are coming just loose in a box, not a lick of freaking padding in yeah. there bouncing around like crazy i don't understand it but hey yeah. it is what it is mm. <laughs> yeah well i yes. imagine that there's not a lot of warehouse employees that are that are yeah. on the collectible market you know what i mean like they're not out there they just think it's a <laughs> well, in the box. Yeah. they're I mean, not big collectors i think they it's two different things i think it's two different things too if you're getting warehouse shipments compared to like private seller shippings too well so. there that's true mm. so. yeah it's a little bit different um all right yeah. well who's up next what do we got I can go. Go ahead. So, continuing pickups for Dark Horse comic variants. We got nice. um, a little Ash Cam. Oh, nice. Ooh, Ooh, Tales of the Jedi, fine. Dark Lord of the Sith. So. Good fun. Uh, I can't remember if I showed this one off last week, but it came in the mail like right before we did the show last week. But So, I got the no, you didn't. Crimson no, Heart. That's cool. Yeah, the Glacy variant. Mm -hmm. is, it, is it Golsi or Glacy? I'm not sure. You're asking the wrong people, dude. <laughs> <laughs> show offs all always look so shiny and. He's out here. Oh, yeah. this well, is funny. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking oh, of shiny, shiny, yeah. Wow. Oh. <laughs> so Panini Darth Vader Matina variant, which um, I, can, I, know, I could probably pull it out of here and not fingerprint it up, maybe. But oh, no, so, no, uh, no, no, no. Yeah, no. Oh, no. no. Hey, I, was, hey, no, I like that. Do it, do it, do it, do it. I like no. that he's got the back. It's a Ford, anyways. <laughs> no, like but yeah. Uh, so it's Brazilian, I think. I'm 99 percent sure it's Brazilian. Oh, he just but, he just yep, there's the it. fingerprints. Yeah, back is the cool. Scalera Emperor variant. So we're down to a, we're down to a nine six. Wasn't yeah. that the <laughs> and dropping nine need, four? Wasn't that the get those hmm. clear boards? I know, oh, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. What's next? I pick those up, and the last one is a little Ooh. Eddie Ooh, Granoff. Like this yeah. one was a uh, with the Rebels background was a Emerald City Comic Con variant. From when Leia number one came out, so you don't see that a lot. No. Wasn't it Grand Off on the Emperor? On the back? No, I think that was Scalera. Did you the, sure? The, the right, Emperor. Fair I could be wrong, but no, no, I could be wrong too. Whatever, man. You get lost once you start looking at all those foreigns, and then just mm -hmm. whatever. Never yeah, it's a rabbit hole. Be, never wanted to be R2 more in my life. 
<laughs> there's actually a really cool sketch version of this too that came out from somewhere i don't know where but there's this nice sketch cool. version pete what do you got anything good i just grabbed a couple of quick little cheap books that's it oh, i was in a shop they had a five dollar variant box and as i was flipping through it and a lot of the same stuff but for whatever reason uh that day they had these force awakens uh i think like one in 15 i'm not sure which one is which and one in 25 that was the noto i think and then the photo like most was it the photo the one yeah. in 15 and it was it up the photo one sucks so that's probably the one in 25 and the 15 is probably the yeah yeah i'm looking I think at they, the, the barcodes the numbers i think it's that's probably the way it went the way it went i, I gotta say i like noto's star wars covers there's some I did you. Noto's not bad. i will say this i wasn't gonna show pickups but then everybody said did anybody get one of these so i will show you this is the Exclusive the uh, the uh, final order cutoff wasn't this the final order cutoff for this this yep. week? Yep. Go ahead, yep. go find that because the I probably should pull out the other one. The actual P, P, PX one is the uh, Mandalorian holding the baby, and there's a virgin cover of that too. All right, um, anybody? Nope, good. We're good with pickups. Cool. Uh, so that's that. Should I even have said that? What insider is this? I don't even know. Two or three. Three. Yep. Okay. There we go. There you go. Everybody's on top of it more than me. I can't wait to get back out. There. All right. Uh, here we go. <laughs> Let's go through what we were about to do, and we'll do weekly recap and see if Dr. Afra, as it was hinted to by Jedi Johnson, is a book that I'm going to keep reading or if it's a book that we're going to throw into the trash. I think I'm still 50-50 on it. And then The High Republic. Are we finally turning the corner on this book for the love of everything that's good? <laughs> All right. Uh, great cover, though. Here we go. We'll start off with The High Republic. These – the I am have, I am surprised with how cheap – I don't know what your guys' opinion on it is, but how cheap Marvel is with their printing and their coloring, how well the um, the Pride books have come out this this, this month. Yeah. I think it's I mean, the best it, cover right here on this yeah, book. Absolutely. Yep. I think actually, you know, I think it was uh, maybe Solo or somebody that said that this was the one they were looking forward to. I think it was Solo and mm -hmm. it actually it's did come out good. One. This is the one I probably ordered the least and you probably should order it at least because it's <laughs> not the best of the books out of them. But anyways, and then the um, I'm not going to give my opinion on uh, the variant because um, apparently flippers and fans of her get really mad when you say anything negative about <laughs> Momoka. So, but you know where you can put that one. Yep. Yeah, there's right. no tall grass. That's a positive though. Yeah, just, I don't know if I, yeah. I mean, I don't see anything <laughs> wrong with the cover. I just don't know if it has a lot to do with the, the story. Yeah. It's, I don't it know what the goal like is about or like the, the stars. It's okay. I mean, it's okay. It seems like fairy tale art. It's her style. That's fine. But like, it kind why of reminds she me of Star Wars books? Sandman cover. Yeah, 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 it does have a Sandman vibe. Like dreams or something. Whatever, man. I mean, hey, why is she sitting on a pot of gold? I don't know. I'm <laughs> I'm <laughs> trying to move on past this cover. We can't help it. We're gonna get all the hate mail from all the I, I, is it, maybe there's a rainbow it. we can't see. Yeah, I never. It's on the cover next to it. Uh, yeah, it is. the uh, pot, pot of gold <laughs> references. No, there's also I, gold I in the background know. too. It's like falling into the pot of gold. Like, yeah. I it's it, that's and by the way, that's actually her tunic. So she's sitting on her tunic, which is full of gold. Hmm. What? <laughs> the, so that's the wraparound. If you look, I that... think it's uh, I think okay. It's we're done. <laughs> we're <laughs> done. Foreshadowing. It's crazy. Foreshadowing. We're always <laughs> after the lucky charms. <laughs> no, it, like if you look, it's like the wraparound. It's magically the wraparound, delicious. It's the wraparound piece of her dress. Is what she's sitting on that's mm -hmm. got the gold in it somehow. Mm -hmm. Jedi, what were you gonna say? Hopefully, I'm, saying, I'm, I'm not a psychic, but I think we're it's foreshadowing of something to come, and uh, yeah, we'll just leave it at that. I don't, <laughs> okay, that's very good. <laughs> she's no, wait, wait, we'll leave it at that so I can't gold, be wrong. Right? She's gonna poop out gold and wipe it with her dress. <laughs> that's what we're saying. The okay. Republic, okay. Moving, moving on, so. <laughs> I, you know what? There is some uh, casual Star Wars fans that I was talking to about this book because I was like, you know, hopefully it's going. And the one thing they said was it's good to see the huts in there, which I think is great because I do think we're going to see more and more huts in like the Book of Fett and stuff like that. And the Rancor part was a little bit interesting with them riding it. I don't know why one of the twins is riding one and the other's got a vehicle and they just didn't have two vehicles. Uh, I think people just like to draw, draw Rancors, which is fine. It was good. Yeah. Um, you got the Modoc chair on the hut. That's kind of cool. That is. The Modoc chair is there. Unfortunately, yeah. we're still fighting the dang year, which is just a waste of everything that's good. Um, I mean, I, you know, we talked about this character early on. 
I think the consensus of the show, even though other people out there were like, oh, it's great. It's a weed monster or whatever they were saying about it and how cool and make sure and we're like, yeah, this is not going to go well. And it hasn't been going well. So um, I think this is finally hopefully coming to an end, even though it's the beginning of a new arc. You do see a little bit of back and forth and that they're fighting together and a couple of different comments that might actually have stuff that happens down the road where the huts and the Jedi get together. We get a little back and forth. We get this right here, which now um, when we see Gale, I'm not sure. Like, this is a hologram now. Now, they showed him in the background. So this would be his second cameo appearance, I guess. I don't think you'd call that a first full. Would anybody call the hologram of him a first full? Yeah. Or first appearance? I don't, yeah. I don't like holograms as first appearances. And that's just Yeah. Me. So that's probably still it's came better out, right? than on a TV in the background. So yeah, I mean, well, he was so, in a, so he, dark side. He, he was in a crowd of Jedi's once too on a stage. So I with not right. being identified. So I think next one's going to be the the book for him, which is good because there's a lot of stuff going to happen in that book. This was interesting. I, what what the heck? Okay, like, so uh, <laughs> drunken uh, drunken. Swamp lizard monster. Yeah, so we're guy? still like, we're still, the... we're still dealing with Skier, even though he doesn't. He's not like directly possessed. His mind's kind of possessed, I guess, by the drain gear because he's like interchanged with him. He kind of has then, like a split personality at this point, doesn't he? Yeah, I'm and with, then he, uh, Go ahead. I'm with so, I'm with Solo on this one. It's bad enough when your doctor's a lizard, but when your lizard <laughs> lizard is high. And just kind of like, hey, <laughs> and a sock puppet. Just a guy. It was. It's a sock, it reminded me of a Jim Henson sock puppet. It did. Yep. So uh, Kiwi, uh, Kiwi is trying to save him again, but he's in a force field now with the sock puppet lizard doctor. It's a Muppet. That's a, yeah, it's puppet a, it's Muppet. It's a yeah. space log out of, out of an asteroid, but shrunk down. And then somehow, somehow needs somehow needs a space helmet, even though nobody else. It's not close. This is half a helmet, you know, just to protect those eyeballs from things dropping. Since since we're just destroying this book, we might as well. (laughs) When did Marvel become DC and stop drawing faces halfway through panels? I Hmm. purposely put these two up here because if you look at the left side, like, oh, okay, she's starting to lose the definition around her eyes and her mouth. Then the next panel, her face is just like. A half an eyeball and who knows God, what's going on yeah. and it's not like they're focusing on anything in particular then they just get rid of it at the bottom i mean that's like the the link down there and then she comes back looking different uh, the notes I, I i don't i don't know what to say um i don't know what to say so they know they should cut off like all the things but then all of a sudden she's getting this even looks misplaced she's it looks like on the top she's off of the panel or she's not on the rain core, then she's bottom. It was a mess of a book this week, unfortunately. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, Which is a shame because we haven't seen her in action very much yet. I mean, yep. we have in, in the books, the novels, but not the comic. Absolutely. Have a Chris, that is. So then we get back to Kiwi, and then all of a sudden she like purposely s- sniffs the uh, drain gear. They really need to get out of it. Then they take her inside. So this all this purple, if you remember, there was that third print for like number two or something where she was in the purple. They finally started using that in here where she's in like this fourth. dream sequence thing. What's that fourth print? Thank it's you. It's the fourth print of number one because I got I got one over here. Did it, did it remind anybody else of that yeah, uh, that movie yep. where they have That's to it. shrink the people down and go inside and like yes. fix the gap? Yeah. So I got a question. <laughs> go ahead. Space. Thank you. So so when she lists the the dang great whatever dang dangar Rengar? Rang, the drink yeah. uh, nobody Rang. gives a crap yeah no. <laughs> when she when she lets them take take over her mind she goes to this place I want to know where the rancor went when when this thing <laughs> took over the rancor I mean did it like go to some fantasy where it's eating Luke or something I mean what what happened. <laughs> He went into the afterworld where there's a bunch of Lokis and King the Conqueror <laughs> running. Um, no, but yeah, no, this I think this is like a force thing in here. It was, I don't know, but then she gets to see the planet of the main guy. She does the eyes trip out thing, the main drain gear, like head lead. So it is kind of like, I guess there is a lead. So if they could take the lead out, then they can take everybody out. They split, mm-hmm. it's a mess of a story. Sorry, it it's just like is. Ender's game, then it's the high mind. Yep. Yeah, it is that she kind of she kind of scratched something on there, so she's got the name, so she knows where the planet they're located at. So eventually, they're gonna get everybody, and they're going to go to that planet, which I think hopefully we get to see. Well, supposedly from the rumors, and we'll talk about it a little bit later, but we might be able to see some Sith finally. Thank God. Um, 
this series is the adventures has far surpassed the series, but I think this has the potential now because of the rumors that are coming out and we'll get into them a little bit later that it might be able to make a little bit of a rebound. It's not a complete, it's not a complete, um, I don't know what your guys' opinion is on this, this book, but you can yeah. see that there's still a little hope left. There I feel like it. they got lost with this book. Like, I feel like it, it started off. Okay. They were laying the groundwork, which you got to do because it's a whole new era of Star Wars and you, know, mm-hmm. you got a buy exposition. And then they just kind of like they started to get into the action. And then it's almost like they lost their place and didn't know what to do. They're just like, well, let's write something. <laughs> do you think it's because yeah. we've, we've read or listened to the novels and then like we kind of know where the stuff was going? Yeah. That, that we kind of given it a little bit of faith and a little bit extra. I just think, I mean, for the common yeah. reader. Go ahead, Jed. I was going to say, the guy that writes this comic is one of the guys that are novelists yeah. that, that well, writs the novel. Yeah. So. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, but the yeah. pacing's totally different to what you have to do with the novel and a comic, and I just don't think they have everything lined up maybe yeah. to how they and, kind of wanted it. Yeah, and this is all wave one stuff for the most part. So, you know, they when they create concepts from this stuff, they do it months, months ahead before even the right. novels come out. So they're they're trying to tie everything together even though they don't really know how it ties together because nothing's out yet. But they just so. even got lazy on the art too, which is just like, I mean, yeah, I think it feels like the kind of the, it, it feels exactly like how we were, we were doing it. All of a sudden they had all the novels come out and everything else. And they just kind of, they're like, look, this, this drain gear just, uh, it's not going to work out. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like yeah. it's done. Mm-hmm. It's not going to work out. We're just not going to get it. So let's start to move on and let's, let's end this pretty quick. And, you know, I should have brought up the chalkboards, but there is some stuff on the chalkboards where we did know that one of the big circle thing was a, a Sith one. You know, I mean, like coming back with a Sith Empire type theme uh, mm-hmm. in the High Republic. I should have shown that I was holding on to it forever and then forgot to reveal that stuff. But so hopefully that's what we're going to start to see in the next one. That's We can just hope and pray for that. Well, the uh, novels are so good. It just I mean, the comic book, I think they just when they put it out, it just seems like a real bad set of cliff notes on a great novel and Mm -hmm. and and so they just they were trying to push it so fast they dropped a lot of the detail and information that made the novel so good but and and i don't think they had it set up quite right for the drain gear i think they could have done something great with the drain gear but the writer didn't know how to perpetuate that monster so if we do get the Sith, I mean that'd be awesome because if it leads into that story, I mean, if well if you think about Sith it, they're coming, John. Snow. And we'll and we'll talk about it a little bit later too. But you got Scott who wrote Dooku, uh, the Lost Jedi, and like, mm-hmm. but he also wrote this stuff too. Hey, look, you can't. He wrote the comic, and as you say, but I think it would have. I think this the Marvel series would have played out better if they did. And everybody's gonna hate this because they're like not another event. But if they did a bunch of one shots. Mm-hmm. Kind of like how they did with the when they did the Air Republic, like the uh, Air, Age of Republic, Age of Resistance stuff. Instead of yeah, trying to make an ongoing title, if they just mm-hmm. would have done some offshoots where you saw the Hut clan, where you saw some of the Jedi, where you, and you pieced all those kind of like they did with the novels, pieced them all together yeah. and put them and done like a couple of little minis. You know, you didn't have to do much and sprinkle in those one shots, and then you're done and you got everybody caught back up. Yeah, but I think you know, I don't know. I think everybody is a lot of conversations I have with people, fans of the show and just people in general, fans of our show and people in general is like, everyone wants to see Sith, and I, I can't, I can't blame them for that. And I do too. Mm-hmm. So like, I mean, I think we're ready to go and hopefully uh, we get it. I know there's a lot of excitement because of some of the news that came out either way. Dr. Afra is up next. Another mm-hmm. pride cover where the color was good, but yes, uh, she's uh, Sanson does. I mean, I don't know. It's okay. a good cover. It just doesn't fit. <laughs> yep. So uh, we are sp- at least she's in the book. She is. Yes. That yeah, is. yeah, that's true. I was, I was supposed to like when they did Yurik and Quill and other ones that weren't even there. So. Yeah, weren't even there. So they're going up to go check out. Uh, they're going up to this little uh, out in the outer rim to the Volcobra to go find this guy. Turns out he's dead. So is the whole ship. The whole ship is entirely dead. But he's got a card in his hand. This is pretty much the way that they're going to get them tied in to an invitation to the Crimson Dawn auction, which you know that's where all these characters are going for the 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 bounty hunter or the bounty hunter books. We got to get everybody into that auction, so they're going towards Crimson. And who shows up? Dirge. Now, sweet, he shows up. 
he almost shoots them. Then he's mad that the guy's dead. And did you kill him? Cause he's supposed to be live. And they're like, no, you're a notorious Barney hunter and you're hard to kill. <laughs> or that's what he says. Anyways. And then all these little creepy characters come out. Now this is where the preview started. And I was like, I swear if they kill him with all these creepy characters and <laughs> I'm done with this series. Um, there is some real cool stuff that happened in here. Oh, there, there he is. He's talking right there on the right side about, oh, he's dead and blah, 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 blah. He's dead before we showed up. Those are backwards. Look at the gun. I thought this was kind of cool. How they did the action in this for him. Mm. Like, you know, he's he's still slamming where he's got the little mace balls that he slams into there. The gun flips out, and then he goes complete action killer, like, da -da 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 -da, boom. Like, I thought this was actually done I mean, really well. Yeah. Because they mm. skip over some of this action in this book. And the, the, art, the art and the some of the Afro books leading up to this have been a little rough. So this is yeah. a refreshing change. Yeah, thank, you for, gun. thank you for putting that better than I did. Uh, JJ, mm -hmm. I appreciate yep. it. Um, that's exactly what I was talking about, but then he gets captured. And then he, this little silliness, which is kind of funny because it's a little bit of throwback to the cartoon, but where it, all they're all over his armor. I don't know. They end up putting him in the tunnel and they, they shoot him out and they said like, he's going to explode from the inside, but they come back to the line. He's notoriously hard to kill. So technically, we don't know if he's dead yet or not. Hopefully, they didn't well, kill him off. Not dead. He's no, alive. They aliens. They the just reason... did the end of aliens. He's they shot him off in space. And... <laughs> the, the reason they put him in that well, I guess I, I can't remember how they got all those slimy things to follow him. I can't remember, but uh, the okay. slimy things are the things that uh, the explode. Things. Yes, yeah, they're they're the ones that explode when with atmospheric changes, not dirge. Well, no, they mm -hmm. yes, but they said they said they said creature. They everything they were referring to everything. Mm -hmm. Then he says we had a deal. So I mean, I hope he comes back. But as we know from the previews, it doesn't look like he's coming back for the next book, or maybe even the book after that. So maybe in four books, we might see him. If he, you're following that terrible Star Wars series where they're ending up like finishing off storylines that happened a dozen books ago, like maybe that's what they're going to do here. I hope mm -hmm. they don't because that kind of sucks. I hope it's, a, it's a war mm -hmm. of the bounty hunters tie-in still. So. Yeah, yeah. So we have to get through that. I mean, there's another one of that. Yeah. So hopefully it comes back. So then they show the invitation, and everybody who's got the invitation, more people who've got the invitation, because everybody and their cousin has an invitation to go to this uh, auction for Han Solo. And that's where's, the end of it. So where's Hondo's invitation? No, he's like, every Hondo? auction. <laughs> he's in like every right. auction in Star Wars books. He's Mine there. must have got lost in the mail, I guess. <laughs> So we will continue. I mean, look, if we're going to continue to review the Star Wars main title, we're definitely continuing to do this one. This book was actually really good. It was surprising. I'm glad I said I would stop reading it and stop buying it if it sucked. <laughs> Your threat worked. Yeah, it yeah. worked. They heard me. All right. They really listened. Just real quickly, uh, we just want to bring this book up again. Uh, Santika, she will be showing up on this cover B for Star Wars Adventures. I know if you guys looked right after we mentioned it, it had sold out. And that was on the FOC, but for late order, they actually did earlier this week. Now, remember, we are shooting on a Saturday, uh, even though you're seeing this on a Sunday. They had earlier this week, they had over, a, they had about 100 copies still available. I don't know what's at this point, but I assume call your uh, LCS real quickly if you want that B cover in her first appearance on the cover. Because just so everybody knows, we move too, on. which which doctor would you rather have, sock puppet lizard doctor or cool guy bat doctor? <laughs> I want the Grimlin. Grimlin. Yeah, the Grimlin. Yep, Grimlin. I don't know. One of them's got bacteria, and the other one's got rabies. I, I don't right. know. Yeah, but the other one's a the other one has got a so guy's hand up his butt. So I'm not, does, that's the doctor I'm not going with. How does the sock puppet doctor do surgery, anyways? Like that comes about. Like, yeah. How does that work? I, well, the <laughs> muscle I can't get wet. That's true. I think I'm going to go with BT1. BT1. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Also, next week's books. Uh, don't forget, we've got Death Sticks. And please, it's it's the, the, the female assassin, Death Sticks, not the guy who sells Death Sticks. They're not even related. One's like nope. related to Night Sister, this one. The other one isn't. But they also have got these wanted covers that are coming up. So hopefully, they'll, they'll look pretty dope. I don't know. I do. Yeah, but she will. Antennas and another's a ninja. But if you believe that a first, uh, that a full page announcing who you are and a background page where you're in it isn't a first appearance, then you'll call this as a first appearance. You get her on the cover either way. There you go. Why doesn't um, Valance ever get his face like done? Like, done right. Like, surely you could, like, you know, do more plastic surgery or something. It's oh, not a yeah. To, to cover that up. That's so that cover. Look like terrible. the turtle. 
That's the yeah, that's the one invariant. The, they all, yeah, um, poster. Yeah. We'll see how it turns out. Head, okay. I think the headshot or whatever you want to call it variant. Speaking of FOC yeah. is still available for seven the last I looked. There is going to be a action figure cover, which I actually there's a lot of good feedback on that one. There's gonna be the A cover, which is the way right, and arguably the worst <laughs> one in twenty-five we've seen so far in the series. However, there seems to be a lot of importance in this book. Uh, because as the Mike Mayow came out with this, wait, 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 wait. You talking about the one in the middle? That's yeah. the one yeah. Man, those are some beautiful colors, though, right? I mean, let's just colors are nice, but like, look at her face and everything. Like, looks... what is going on there? Yeah, when your favorite part of the cover her? is the background sky. What's are those eyes behind her? Let's 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 yeah. really break this down like we did the other one. It's What's the drain gear. Really We're gonna do the play by play. I just lost my audio. We're gonna do the play by play on this. Is this serious? Yeah, I can. I can no, only. I'm, okay. I'm hoping that it looks better. In so that's game. the done. That's the done of the play by play on that one. So, uh, but Mike Mike Mayu also has a cover. So that was late because they didn't actually have these covers available. They didn't have the. They just got it this week. But mm -hmm. Mike came up with this. Showed us this figure, which is going to be a new Darth that uh, JJ will be getting into. Which is nice. We're finally getting a new Darth, and he says that this Darth is showing up in this book now. Hopefully, he didn't just tease it on the cover, and we're not actually getting it inside the book. I hope. Yep. 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 According to what he said on his Instagram post, it's also the first appearance. Of yeah, he character. said it's in the book in his yep. Instagram post. So if not, then like make sure you go to his Instagram and. You guys can talk to him. What a true first, so, free first. He really probably would like that. He'd appreciate hearing from the fans of what a true first and real first and first cover first, first. So this is first, not first a first previous is. character. We haven't seen this character before. Well, no, we'll get it into it. Looks a lot like it, yeah. It we'll looks a lot like Sesker, it. but yeah, we'll get into it here. Yeah, I was gonna it, say I thought it was Sesker. That that's what I everybody thought it was too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You mean? Skier? But it turns out it's not Skier. Yeah. Yeah. Skier. Skier. Yeah. Sesker. All right, so that <laughs> is the recap <laughs> for this week. That is the That's recap for this week. And after that, we have It's a Trap where we'll talk more about Dark Curl. Dar I didn't listen to the audio. I only read the book, so I don't know how you pronounce his name. Crawl. Is it Crawl? Crawl. crawl? Okay, that's what yep. we're you're Darth Crawl, like a baby crawls. This is what mm -hmm. we're going with. Okay. Yeah, not that's how they pronounce it. it. Awesome movie from the 80s. With awesome. The All right, Jedi, here like, we go. You like and Darth Crawl. crawl. You know, like Polly Shore and uh, Son in Law. Crawl, not crawl. Crawl, not crawl. It's crawl. 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 All right. What, J All right. JJ, let's go. So, enter the Lost 20, uh, Darth Crawl. So, now I'm going to say this up front. This is like the only image we have of Darth Crawl is that Mike May covered the word from. So, you're going to see this image maybe a couple times in this presentation here. But uh, <laughs> that is <laughs> that is Darth Crawl that we know of. So, flip the next slide for me. All right. So, we're going over the Lost 20. I apologize for the small typeface here, but we'll run over it. So, pretty much the Lost 20, you've heard Marco and me and other people mention it probably here and there. But basically, what they are is they're 20 Jedi Masters that have left the Order. And the important note is they all left for the similar or same reason, which was they got disillusioned with the way the Jedi Order worked and no longer wanted to be a part of it. Um, they weren't like forced out or mind controlled out. They basically voluntarily resigned because they disagreed with what the Jedi were doing. Um, some of them turn dark. Some of them don't turn dark. Uh, the important thing to remember is that I don't know why they put it in the Jedi Archive Library, but there are all 20 of their busts of their head are in the Jedi Library. Um, and if anybody zooms in on one of the panels there, there's one that looks an awful like Kiwi, who's also mentioned as one of the Lost 20 going forward, yep, as Master the, Trinis. Yep. On yeah, the, the right. Bust so on the right. They've both, was it the, in, in uh, was it Dooku Lost, where they talk mm -hmm. about, they name at least three of them that have been lost already. Yep. So. Yep. So they it came about first and actually a deleted scene from um, Attack of the I think it was Attack, Attack of the of Clones, Clones. Yep. where they're talking about why Dooku left and then they're showing his bust. That's what that image is there. But um, go ahead and flip to the next slide for me. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so yeah, going over the Lost Twenty, it pretty much started back around 1000 BBYI, which would be even before the High Republic era. But um, and then it goes to the last person or the first person to leave. Was um, what was his name? Master um, Rune. Well, yeah, he becomes Darth Rune. 
Fetus. 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 Fetus or Fetus. something. Master, Master Fetus, Fetus was his Jedi name. Mm-hmm. And then he becomes Darth Rune. He's the first to leave around that time. And then the last one to leave that we know of is Dooku, obviously, who was Darth Tyrannus, um, who we all know from the prequel movies, obviously. Mm-hmm. Um, so you got going forward. It was kind of also weird because there's a, at least in Legends, there was a story where Jedi or Anakin Skywalker considered himself to be the 21st member of the Lost. Mm-hmm. Even though I don't know that you would necessarily consider that because you pretty much destroy the Jedi Order. I don't know how you could say you're yeah. 21, but that that was his feelings anyways. <laughs> Especially as dressing a former Jedi Master, he called himself the 21st. Um, but all in all, you have basically 20 people that left. 12 of them left before um, like the High Republic era would have started. And a few left during the High Republic era. And then uh, I think you ended up with 20 by the time Dooku left. Yep. Do so the be, 20th. It'd be interesting if they threw a clip in in, in the Obi Wan series where uh, Anakin was, you know, talking to Obi Wan in like a memory or something, or or a, you know, a duel and, and referred to himself as the twenty first. Twenty first. Yeah. Never know. Never know. That'd be neat. Interesting. Yep. Go ahead. So next up, we got Darth Crawl. Who Darth Crawl was a character known as Radaki, a Jedi, I should say, known as Radaki. Yeah. Um, and he came about in Dooku Jedi Lost, which was an audio book later released as a normal book by Kevin Scott, who also writes the right High Republic books. Um, or one of the High Republic books, I should say, in comic. The Marvel one. Mm-hmm. But um, basically, in that book, they detail, like Marco said, three characters that left around the High Republic era, which Dooku Jedi Lost tells the story of Dooku's history with the Jedi. Um, basically his origin story, I guess you could say. And during that time, um, Crawl is mentioned as one of the, I guess, first Jedi during kind of Yoda's era that left. And Yoda even mentions him as having become a powerful Sith Lord in the present tense, mind you. So he said he has become a powerful Sith Lord or something along those lines. Um, and then by the end of that book, obviously, we all know what happened to Dooku, so I'm not going to read the detail in that. But Darth Crawl is important because he's the first uh, character we're seeing not from pre- this did you say? I'm sorry, did you say present tense? It was past. He referred to him as past. It. He said he was a, a blah, blah, blah. He was he a, said, well, he said it in um, Yoda terms, but he says Radaki was a powerful Sith Lord he became. So, yeah, you're right. I guess it wasn't past tense. Uh, past. Yeah, past. Yeah. Uh, whatever. <laughs> well, no, I'm just Anyways, it was in that my, bad. my bad. My bad. Go ahead. Sorry. 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 <laughs> Good point. Uh, he's not yeah. around during the. I'm just saying he's not around during the. the he's not going to be. A, like, he's not around during. You know, well, he's the, around during ABI. the High Republic. Yeah, but not during ABI. Yes. Yes. Yeah. He is. The yeah, he doesn't go all the way through Duke's area. He's yeah. not that yeah. old or anything. Yeah. That's what we I don't trying. know what happens to him, but he does participate in a battle at some point because they talk about how he was the one that won the battle of. I think Sifo Diaz is talking to Dooku about it, and he wins the battle of the wasted space or something like that, oh, which yeah. could also be another High Republic reference. I don't know if it about the hyperspace lanes and all that stuff. But, um, anyways, wasted years. Yeah, uh, wasted years. Sorry. Uh, so you got also too. By the way, that one picture there, oh. Uh, oh, crawl yeah. is in the top right. The one picture is actually Darth Ruin, which I used mm-hmm. it because I just wanted to see everybody compare Bust to what he looked like as a Sith Lord there. But, mm-hmm. That's cool. Yep. Uh, so the the Sifo Diaz thing said that is talking about the nightmare conjunction, which might be in the when you guys saw the recap where you saw her in the in the purple. Anyways, go yeah. ahead. So what's the yeah. and important to note too that Duke of Jedi Lost takes place even Duke's life takes place after the High Republic era mm-hmm. or mm-hmm. around the end of it. But um, so our central question is whether or not the Lost Twenty and characters like Darth Crawl are here to stay. So you got. On Never Tell Me Odds, you land on the side of Darth Killer they're, Croc. <laughs> they're here to stay for a while. Uh, the, you know, you're, you're definitely going to see them in comics. It's not a one-off thing. Uh, you might see them in movies, TV shows, and then obviously the It's a Trap is Darth Killer Croc, aka Darth Crawl. <laughs> You'll never see him <laughs> again. He may be in this comic, but he ain't going to be anything significant. Mm-hmm. Good stuff. Good stuff. Uh, who'd like to go first? Sure, I'll jump in there. Okay, go ahead. I think it's a never tell me the odds. I think eventually I feel kind of like they kind of have to touch on or the, or they're building 
towards the lost 20 and, and being able to tap into that that storyline they can they can play it out between quite a few different things and open that the possibility of it so i think it's really a never tell me the odds and this is a great way to to kind of usher it in so that we have a, a chance or they have a chance to write more about it or or toss that little spice you know on, on the omelet in there Mm -hmm. so i think if you've listened to us long enough you know where my opinion is this because i bring up the lost 20 all the time when i talk about the high republic and the reason why i do is because this is actually the third character we know for sure is part of the lost 20 you got orel you've got uh kiwis and you've got him all three are going to be in the lost 20 there's an option of two to three more characters that they've either introduced through the novels or in the comic world well one they're going to do next week too that have the potential. So we might get up to six of the lost 20. Um, there's a show called Acolytes coming up. There's a lot of stuff that's pointing to this lost 20 area. I know a lot of us want stuff like the planet of Sith or go back and do the Jedi Sith Wars. But if you can give us the lost 20 and all of them won't be like when I talk about the three that are for sure going to crawl, you've got Aurel and you've got uh, Kiwis. We know or else probably just going to be what a wanderer for the rest of her life. She's going to be one of the lost 20. She was a master, but she's leaving the order. She is apparently from what it sounds like and from what they've told us already. <laughs> but you're going to have, we know that uh, Kiwis is because Yoda said the same thing in some backwards language about that. She left and losing her was a big one. We couldn't tell mm -hmm. if she turned dark or not, but then you also got crawl. So like they might just do more. I think they have to, because that's intriguing stuff. Is there any yeah. star Wars fan that doesn't want to see, Jedi that left the order, Ahsoka Tano when she left the order. People love her. I mean, people could say what they want now, but that storyline where and everybody will say like, yeah, it turned the corner after season one. That's not true. When mm -hmm. when Tana finally when they had her getting set up at the end, the Sky Guy thing, nobody mentioned it anymore. And when she yeah. was turning, it intrigued people so much where she was like, hey, you know what? I'm not going to come back to the Jedi Order. I'm going to do my thing. And and I think that added a lot into the flavor of her. And I think they know because they follow all these things that, that that's a good point. So I think we're going to see, never tell me the odds. I think they're going to give us a story of the Lost 20. And I wouldn't be surprised if they didn't just do that as an ongoing like Disney Plus series. That's my opinion. Hmm. Yeah, they could give you minis. Yeah, like a season talking about this character and they focus on somebody else. They could jump around and expand the universe. Yeah. Or do it in groups of errors, like the high Republic era, the lost 20, you know, you could do the old Republic era, the lost 20, you know, cause you, you could do, and you could push it back. I mean, it's not going to be that long, right? I mean, I know it seems like a lot, but if you think like you're going to go down to like 200 BBY from what? 199 BBY. And we know that mm -hmm. six of them turn between the years of 400 well, no, sorry. We know three for sure turn mm -hmm. leave the order between 400 and 200. So then if mm -hmm. you do one just during other spans, you can, I mean, you can get there pretty quickly. And then you got Dooku after that. So you know for sure he's gone. And I think if if they consider, I don't think they considered Sifo. So like, I think you would have heard between the High Republic and Dooku, like mm -hmm. you would have heard of more. So I think we're going to get six there. 20 is not a lot, but I mean, it's yeah. really no. only... No. And I did get a question from somebody a while ago too about like would Ahsoka or something, but important to remember there are Jedi Masters that left. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there are other people that have left the Jedi Order, but it's these twenty were only classified because they were Jedi Masters. Masters, gotcha. Yep. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm also on the never tell me the odds uh angle too. I think all of what you guys said definitely fits and just going back to the whole uh the writer wrote, you know, about them already, it makes sense that the current writer may Mind from work that he's already, you know, you know, worked on the characters he likes and concepts that he likes. So I think we might get a little bit more in the comics and hopefully, you know, on Disney Plus or whatever movies they got going. We still don't know all the movies that we got coming. Mm -hmm. There's a whole trilogy of unknown coming. Well, I mean, you got to think too. Like when I talk about that chalkboard, the chalkboard for the High Republic came out while they were just doing the plan of it, they had mentioned they're going to do something called the Illumina whatever, or Luminaris or whatever. But that stuff, that was like four years before the comic, the first comic even came out, like the first book mm -hmm. or anything. So like, think about that. Like right now, those shows, a lot of them, there's just people doing chalkboard stuff, like throwing out, like just brainstorming. Jedi, what do you have on this? Um, I'm going to say never tell me the odds as well. I know I normally go against the grain on this, but I, I think that, 
I think we're going to see uh, these lost 20. I don't know. They're going to come up outside of the comic books and the books. Uh, I, I just see it. I think Disney will eventually uh, use that material. I just, I think they will. Mm -hmm. You guys have already, I won't, I won't rehash what all of you guys have said. No. I just agree. I agree yeah. with what you said. I fall the same way. I'm going to never tell me the odds. And for a lot of the reasons everybody already stated, the only thing is I hope the Darth crawl thing is not like a huge tease, like some sort mm -hmm. of, because the thing that worries me is like in issue six, we had kind of that dream sequence mm -hmm. deal where she was had her mind. I just hope it's not something like she like imagines Darth crawl and they get into like an imaginary fight or something. Like, oh, you're talking about I, five, two or the skier thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah I, I hope really he actually one. shows up. I would love to see that one that uh, JJ didn't focus on, but he put that picture down there because to me that guy looks like the Jeepers Creepers uh, <laughs> monster does. from the movie. Yeah. I, I would well, love to see that. That would be awesome. Do you remember this? They've shown Sith before in I think it was four or something when they were talking about, mm -hmm. or no, was it in the Adventures? It was in one of the two when they were talking about the spaceship where they were all on the, uh, all on the. Uh, not the starlight beacon but the other one where the dranger were trapped and, and undone so we know that they're, oh, it's coming yeah. and yeah. and the only reason i don't think this is like a fake is like because kiwi's gonna have to turn and they're about to introduce one of the characters that leaves the order that mm -hmm. we know for sure leaves the order so yeah. if you're gonna do that you might as well set it up with a sith to feel them in plus i think they're really hurting with the dang gear like that thing is i i mean i hate to say we called it because you never wish bad luck on it but for all those people that were like high on that character, mm -hmm. one way or another, it, you know, yeah. I mean, it, it, it's it a little bit. Me, it, it makes Go me ahead, wonder Sam. how long they've been planning this because ever since I've been kind of, I knew about it, not fully detailed as, as much as I, as much information as I have now. But as soon as I saw Attack of the Clowns, when Dooku's sitting there explaining <laughs> to Obi Wan all of it and how he turned. You know, and the, and the twenty, and then they're talking about it in the library and showing the busts. Have I, it makes me wonder just how long they've been planning to give this section, this story of of the twenty. And I think that they probably had an idea, just didn't know how to bring it forth and and pan it out. No, it's on the on Since when then. they were when they were having that when they were having that meeting at Skywalker Ranch. It says it on the whiteboard. It says Lost mm -hmm. Jedi. Mm -hmm. It's one of the words that yeah. says it. Yeah, so. but I mean, it's I mean, it's been how long do you think that the idea? To me, it seems like they came up with the idea of it back back in you know epi since oh, episode yeah. two, and they've just been playing up to it ever since. I there think, were yeah, there uh, were legend references too when legends yeah. when before they split it or whatever, right. and there were references then. They never called them the Lost Twenty like they didn't no. necessarily hear, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. they referred to these masters that have left the order. <laughs> I think I think a lot of stuff. I think a lot. I think a lot of the, a lot of, a lot of this gets lost because of people's mindsets. And I think it, we were talking pre-show about some of the stuff too that happens where people want headlines and stuff. But like you know, when everybody's like, "There, it's all Disney. They're destroying Star Wars. They're getting rid of all the legacy things." No, the plan was always to slow roll it back in. And this is one thing where it's like cut scenes or like when the Bad Batch, like the Bad Batch was cut. The Sokatana stuff, which even before Dave supposedly took over and threw Catherine Kennedy to the ground while giving her elbow <laughs> drops from Lucas from the sky, like Dirt there was a book that already came out called Ahsoka, which was the cut seeds from Clone Wars that never got produced. That was already reintroduced to canon. That's years. It was at 2016 when Disney first took over. So they have mm -hmm. been slowly bringing this stuff back. I don't think people realize it. So I think what happened was like they went there and they've got all this stuff that's like, hey, these are cutscenes because this was a cutscene that came out of uh, Attack of the Clones. And they're like, hey, man, this is a really cool idea. It was a great concept. We've never been able to use it. Let's like bring it back and fold it in because this is what people like. And they're, they're right. They People like the Sith. They like these stories of turning to the dark side. They like all that type of stuff. And to get away from the Skywalker saga, which... You know, there's a lot of people who've come up lately and said, man, I, I just I thought this was going to work out. But I really do wish they get a little bit away from the Skywalker saga and give us something new and something different and more Sith or a different line for the Sith or this, that. Because they're reading more now of the old stuff, too. Mm -hmm. I think when you see that, 
these these artists and these right artist writers whatever they're they it's always part of the plan is to reincorporate these storylines that got cut short or never got produced and to do it you see like i said once again you saw it with ahsoka you, you saw it with the, th the th what they did with thrawn you're, you're seeing it with thrawn you saw it now with the lost 20 which was something that was brought up a couple other elements i have no doubt that we're going to see plan of the sith at one point like that type of stuff is eventually going to go um and it seems like they keep doing it. I think the the narrative of like they you know they destroyed this and there's nobody left and Lucas was so great. Well, Han shot first, man. You know what I mean? So like <laughs> everybody's always had different problems with stuff, but I think some of this stuff right now is great because they're bringing it back and they've always planned on doing it because nobody goes like, oh, you know what? The Drangir are failing today because comic book sales slowed down. Let's switch gears real quickly. You can't you can't switch a behemoth that fast. You know what I mean? Like it's yeah. like a charging elephant, dude. It don't doesn't turn on a dime, man. So this has definitely been planned out for a while, um, and we'll see. Uh, up next, we have uh, we all are all in on that. Cards. Right? We're good. Cards. Yep, we got cards. cards. Up next. Jedi. Okay. So uh, so yeah. So uh, JJ, let us know that. Uh, I think there was a Beckett art article that uh, mm -hmm. uh, released or uh, informed about uh, Tops release information about their 2021 Star Wars Masterwork trading card. The box you see on your screen is not the product. Mm -hmm. uh, let's just go to the next one. We'll just run through them real quick. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, so this is an example of the base card. Looks pretty good. I haven't collected mm -hmm. cards in quite in a couple of, well, probably about five or six years, and that was football cards. I've never really collected uh, Star Wars cards, uh, especially modern Star Wars cards. But, uh, mm -hmm. you know, looking at these and kind of doing a parallel comparison to, you know, what I remember football cards being like, it's pretty similar. I mean, yeah. I know we have some of our viewers that do collect Star Wars cards. Uh, VK on comics, I know collects, does, uh, mm -hmm. and I'm sure we have we have others. Uh, these, to me, they look like nice cards. I'd love to get uh, some of the viewers' comments uh, uh, on what they think about it. But, so, yeah, this is a, uh, yeah, go ahead. JJ. This is like their, um, again, I don't collect cards that much either, really. But I know Masterworks is kind of like their top tier as far as. It's their premium um, product. Yeah, yeah. For, yeah, for Star Wars at least. So Yeah, yeah so there's 100, 100 cards, which is good. Uh, it's a nice, easy set to build if you're going for the base set. Um well, and, uh, that's depending on how many cards are per pack. They could sell you four cards per pack, and well, that's true. I mean, I, I think that you could, yeah. If you're if you're going to do a box bust, you're probably not going to get a set out of a box. That's true. Uh, but I think uh, either on the secondary market or whatever, a lot of these cards will be easy to come by, and you won't have to yeah. build like a 400, 100 card set. Do we know a uh, price point on this at all? Uh, I don't. They, they, these actually, I'll, I'll get to it at the end. But uh, yeah, they don't. Uh, this is not releasing until December of this year. Okay. Uh, I I meant to, but I didn't go back and uh, research uh, the 2020 release. But uh, you know, if you do a uh, a comparison between 20 and 21, it'd probably be a pretty pretty close. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, because as we go through this, and I'll, I'll note this later as well, as you go through this, I did do a card comparison. I didn't do a price comparison because I didn't know what this price was. But sure. uh, card for card, parallel, uh, inserts, there's a lot of similarities between the twenty one, the 2020 and the 2021 release uh, as far as what the cards look like. So uh, this is a, our, yeah, as far as the inserts and things. Uh, character based uh, with droids and creatures, so I guess that means we're not going to be getting any any movie shots or set shots or planets, or things like that. It's all going to be character based, which is good in my opinion. I like the character based ones. You know, I could care less what's going on on the set, really, of Mandalorian or whatever. Uh, so, of course, you're going to have your parallels uh, with, with numbered parallels and. From every color in the rainbow looks like and then mm -hmm. you're gonna have the one-on-one -on -one printing plates those those of course are going to be the hard to get uh, for anyone that's uh, in this hobby uh if you for the printing plates and the one-on-ones you pretty much you know you go for your character that you collect uh, would be that would be the target anything below probably 10 
depending on the character too. Uh, you know, you may you probably have to hunt for it pretty good. Uh, next, we have uh, autographs. Always the uh, the the premium pool of any pack or any box is going to be your autographs. Uh, they actually said some of these autographs are on the card, which is getting more and more rare. Um, mm. And then uh, from all the trilogies, as well as the spinoffs, uh, on as far as the stars go, we see Kira here. Um, and then um, obviously these come in parallels too. All right, next uh, checklist information on these. We also have the and we, we've been seeing these in sports for a while, the uh, the multi-autograph cards, including the booklet autographs, uh, hmm. which are you know, really hard to find and very popular, especially if you get good characters. Uh, and then... Uh, I'm already the thinking, one... man, I got to get me one of them Darth Mauls. <laughs> this is terrible. Yeah, they look you're, good. You're making yeah. me broke. <laughs> these yeah, are these, cool. These look, these look great. Yeah, uh, there's one of one Galactics. Uh, there's that one. I would love to see this. They didn't give an example. They say there's a one of one Galactic autograph book that has 20 signatures on it. Oh, uh, it's one of a kind. So, you know, it's going to. Yeah. Yeah. Good luck. Yeah, this it's gotta be some sort of mail away. You guys are you guys are big SIG guys, right? Are you guys big SIG guys? Is that something yeah. for you? Yeah. Yeah. Really. I'm talking about the old guys. <laughs> Jedi and so, mean, like yeah, signature. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah those, I, I, uh, go ahead, Wookie. Nah, the, I, the, the more you talk about it, the more you explain, the more I see, the more I want it. Like, it, it, oh, yeah. I, I'd really like to, uh, man, there's some, some classic signatures in there that you, you just, you, you're not going to get every day anymore. That, <laughs> maybe that, Wookie and I will go in and there are any of us. Maybe we'll go in and do a, uh, do a break and then we can all be, the the viewers can see how pissed we are whenever we get like. Sure. We can do that. That's fine. I'll throw a couple of those. Signature. I just, no, <laughs> then, I just, yeah. I no, can you go back though? I wanted to, I wanted to focus on one thing that I thought was, I just want to see it. So obviously in sports, you know, the big thing got to be with the, the autograph memorabilia card, right? A swatch of jersey or whatever. Yeah. But bottom line, autograph pin relics return that have a piece of the pin used that that these that the the actor signed the card with. Then I guess they take the pin, break it up, and actually use it. On the card, that makes <laughs> absolutely I, no sense to me. I, See, that just, <laughs> this, I think, I don't understand. This is all ridiculous to me. I would, that, it, to me, that's a little silly, but yeah, that is that is very dumb to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, oh well. Next, so, so, let's go, yeah, let's go. Yeah, we next. also have a piece of the napkin they used when we gave them lunch that day for coming <laughs> in to sign. Yeah. So uh, the, the tablecloth under, under the under the place where they signed is also cut up into little swatches and put out there and they sneezed on it or we'll sell you anything, but seriously, the okay pain. That. There, may, there may be some DNA on that. And I've got a Palpatine cloning facility just around the corner <laughs> from me. And, uh, all right, Sheldon know. Cooper. All right. <laughs> yep. Yeah, up next. What's the next one? Right, let's go to the next slide. Uh, so yeah, these are some of the probably, uh, well, absolutely lesser, your odds of getting these inserts are, are, are a lot better than the, the autograph for the, the pin card. Uh, they have one with the stamp card. I think there's some sketches. Um, there's a different kind of sketches as far as the presentation of the sketches and stuff. I'm not an expert on what all, all the different kind of sketches form. I don't know. But anyway, then, of course, you have parallels of those ranging down to the one of one gold. Of course. Yeah. I like and it because I slide. do try and collect the stamps as well. I mean, you're just selling. You're hitting all my points here. It, it looks good, right? I mean, yeah. it's probably not that hard a card to come by, but it looks like it looks nice. It really does. Yeah. I, I don't know if that's a real you, uh, postal stamp or if that's just something that commemorative stamp. I don't. I don't know. Oh, it says commemorative. Pete, tell me this. Is just, uh, Pete, yeah. Pete, please tell me this is just. Old, tell me this is old guy talking. I'm not the only one that's <laughs> lost on this. Like. These two guys are so excited I mean, about signature. Hey, you want to, yeah, I think really it's a mixture because I think it's different. Like it's a different collecting mentality. Like these mm -hmm. guys are like in the stamps and the signatures, but meanwhile, like the more modern card collectors, hey, all they I think about are parallels, parallels, parallels. Of like, so not only you got all these cards, you're gonna have purple versions, you're gonna have blue versions, orange versions, nice. black yeah. versions. Yeah. All right, so it's called everybody. 
Good hey, you stuff. know what? I was, uh, you know, talking about the old guy mentality. I'm, I, I collect a little bit of everything, and uh, I think Solo has shown one of these. I was at the post office this week, and oh, no. I was I was picking up from some stamps uh, for my mother, and uh, <laughs> I was wearing I was wearing uh, my mask, and I have a Star Wars mask that I wear, and uh, the lady's like, "Oh, you like Star Wars?" I was like, "Oh, I love Star Wars," you know, and she goes, "You know, we have Star Wars stamps." I was like, uh-huh. "Well, let's see them." The new page so of, she, of droid she, stamps. I have the droid. I, she showed me the droid stamp, and I'm like, uh, yeah, I'll take some. Yeah, yeah, they come out oh. with them every now and then, and there's some foreign ones that are hard to yeah. find, but yes. yes You're going to use whole, them, though, Jedi, right? rabbit hole. No, I ain't mother. using them. You're not You're using them? them? No. Uh-uh. Get, Why don't yeah. you just send me your money? I'll put it to better use than you. <laughs> just send me your money. Okay. Hey, Next there's, slide. There's a book of Spain Star Wars stamps. That <laughs> this is supposed to be a short segment. It is. <laughs> Sorry. 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 Yeah. You guys are talking All about right. going to the post office buying stamps. All right. So, uh, and this actually, this is the card right here, the example, the one that, that actually kind of got my blood flowing. And thank God it's an easy one because it goes back to those old, you know, you guys know how I love the nostalgic mm-hmm. era, you know, action figures, comics. So they have this card right here, which is. Uh, obviously shows the old action figures uh different kind of stamps again or sorry sketches uh these are the easier to less rare inserts but again parallels always got to do parallels uh, for the yeah hunt. think of how many parallels and side sets we've already gone over when you're like it's 100 base card sets easy to finish uh, All right, and then finally, finally the uh, thirty thousand foot uh, overview. Uh, so yeah, five cards per pack, four pa- four packs per uh, box, which kind of is to uh, Pete's point about yeah, you're not going to put this set together on one box. It's mm-hmm. Not going to happen. Well, you can't. Probably, you you might be lucky. But yeah, you'd be lucky maybe if you get a case and you get. I don't know. Um, well, look at it. Twenty cards said, in that uh, box. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, in a box. <laughs> In a hobby box, and this is not to be confused with the blaster boxes and all that stuff you find at Walmart yep. and Target and stuff. The hobby boxes uh, that you get at your card stores or order order directly usually uh, two autographs per box plus an additional two additional inserts that might be autograph memorabilia, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. Uh, and then four inserts the and four parallels per box. And I think that's it. But yeah, yeah which is why the hobby box will be like a hundred dollar item, even though it should only be like twenty dollars or something in the store. Because man, I already see it. fights breaking yep. out over this. I just <laughs> they're gonna have to stop selling cards at Target and Walmart. <laughs> <laughs> if they hey, if they stop the if they stop the Pokemon train again because of this, I'm gonna be upset. <laughs> All right, good job, Jedi. Way to cover it. I I don't know, man. I, if you want to buy a, what's the biggest thing we can buy there? A box, a box of boxes. Case. Well, if they we come out and are like three four hundred dollars a box, then yeah, we may yeah. have to just pass. But... Well, no, get we'll get buy a, a case. It, yeah. Remind me after the show, and I'll talk to somebody. Maybe we can get a direct case to us or something like that. Yeah, you just awesome. gotta remind me. Not after the show. I mean, remind me in the upcoming weeks. All right, good stuff. Hey, real quickly, I did want to go back to one point that we forgot, and everybody said, "Don't forget this," and then I forgot to mention it anyways. So here we go back to this. This right here, this book right here, it is sold out the last we checked at Mike May uh, at Mike's uh, site. Mayhew. However, Mayhew, but uh, Wanted Beaver, something Beaver. Mutant. Mutant, Mutant, Mutant Beaver. Beaver had some still, but there's the like a last, collection of As of right now, they had some still, but I don't know yeah. if it's going to be there long. All don't right. forget we're taped. We're taped too, so by the time you watch this, they might yeah. not be there. Yeah, <laughs> we'll not be there. Up next, oh, up next we have upcoming stuff, which is the Wills, which I really like. Um, I know they've been doing a lot of stuff on this too. All the backstories, I think this is going to give us a lot of fill-in, kind of like <sighs> a lot of the fill-in of the backstories. They're hitting the Rogue One stuff up and a little bit before maybe. Guardians of the Will, we're going to see the preview of the um, Mag. We should have probably had, uh, what's Heartless's real name? Nick, um, Nick. For this. Yeah, maybe we will. Maybe we'll bring him on to review this. Anyways, uh maga they have got the guardians of the wills there's gonna be the free preview this wasn't supposed to be the final art but i think it probably is i think this might be the back cover to the left that has them on it because it's gonna be two parts two-parter and you know how they like to do that 
they're pretty much going to go back to the Holy City before the Empire was there. You're going to get my man Blaze, who's got that sweet cannon gun that never stops, like the Gatling gun. And yeah. Imwi, who is blind and will beat you with his stick or the bowcaster thing that shoots out of that. They are going to run into Saw Guerrero. We do have a couple times we've seen them before in comics. As you can see, Rogue One, they have the little he Imwi is on the cover there. But, you know, everybody's always chasing these for a bunch of other first appearances. Anyways, what's that third cover right there, man? That thing is That's just a... gorgeous. I had never seen that until we previewed this earlier. That mm -hmm. third cover on, on the right there is, man, that thing is, I love it. It's a, I love it's it. a Mayhew cover. It's a Mayhew cover. And I believe wow. they refer to it as cover I, but it's the Mayhew cover. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, I just think Mike Morello could have been on that cover. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> with the guitar. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So okay. inside, this is the page you get. I would debate that this isn't a first appearance. It obviously has got their names on it, and they get a whole page, even though it's eyes and shadows in the background, and you get to really just see them both together once. But either way, other books you might want to, if you want to collect, number two has both of them on the cover, and there is a one in twenty-five that currently usually goes under ratio and is really awesome. That's the book on the right. Uh, you might want to pick that up if you're going to be collecting these guys because I have a feeling that 125 might start disappearing. But, you know, the two you can find the regular cover in dollar bins because nobody's grabbing that right now. Uh, also, there's some backstory on at least Imway uh, in Galaxy's Edge. We've talked about these books a thousand times, um, so I don't even know if you can find them around anymore. But then every time yeah. we find one, we're like, I can't believe we're still finding these around. Anyhow, <laughs> I uh, see the regulars they, around the regular cover. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think it's been like like good six months before I've the second print. We see the second print. If you print. see one, pick it up because I don't see them around Arizona at all. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, but this is what you get in here, and this is why this might be important because this is probably the temple that he's in right currently with this new MAGA book or MAGA. MAGA somebody say manga, MAGA? manga, manga, whatever manga. coming out, and also has a couple more characters like the temple guard. Fish gills and the temple guard Baldy McBald bags, and then you've got the ninja guard too. So we might actually get to see a bunch of different guards that already showed up coming out in this maga maga whatever. Maga. All right, and that's maga. recap. So that's three. So if you want all their stuff, that's pretty much all their stuff. There is a couple novels where you get to see them too, including Guardians of the Will, which was a smaller book, and uh, they have some stuff in the from a certain point of view. The second one. Uh, so there you go. That's what we got. I almost just closed out StreamYard. I have one with collecting and collecting is one with me. I yeah, yeah. There you go. Collecting is one with me. So that's just a little recap on the wheels, just so you guys know that's coming up. We said we'd get when it came closer, we'd let you know more about it. So there's the more that you get about it. Okay, now we have Bad Batch, which when we talk about Bad Batch, it's going to be short this week. Uh, and it's only going to be short because I don't think it was a terrible episode, but like, what are you going to Not show? a lot happened. No, yeah, not a lot of news. I'll be honest with you. I always say story building. <clears throat> this is a filler episode. Okay. So we go back <laughs> to a planet. <laughs> we go back to a planet that's very popular. You know, it's funny because we keep talking about all this, uh, Jedi lost and all these old stories and everything like this. This planet actually had to deal with, um, Dark Disciples. This planet showed mm -hmm. up in Dark Disciples. It's a old um, separatist planet. I thought they did the rollout pretty good with it. Uh, this scene, which was in the trailer, you finally get to see, and it's when they kind of overrun the people. I put it out of order. So, um, my name is Scrooge Bags here. It comes out. <laughs> the Sultan of... Isn't this Uncle... Isn't this the Monopoly guy's cousin, the Sultan? Anyways, yeah, like talking, Sultan And then we... Spy. We get the 18th droid of the service droid that sucks and um, says, hey, if something goes wrong, you know, follow my directions by the order. And you're like, OK, so something's going to go wrong. The Empire's here and they're making <laughs> him, the senator, pitch to them like how great the Empire is. Wasn't, and the guy in the, wasn't he in the Clue movie? Didn't I? 
<laughs> Wait, isn't this the guy? Plum? This was uh, uh, no, is this the guy on no. the tail from the flip side shirt. This is the guy on the tail <laughs> yeah. flip side shirt, isn't it? Anyway, yeah. I noticed was he, he tells he tells this droid to follow her his orders. We never actually see him give the droid orders. So this is something that was pre-programmed, yeah. I guess. Into the yeah, story. his orders were make a phone call, and That's the orders were terrible, true. by the way. The orders were like, call if bounty happens hunter. to me. Call. Perlman, the Trandoshian lizard is all <laughs> underground to come save me. Like, good plan, my yeah. bags. So, uh, as you can see, this is going well. All right. So, there, yeah, that's step what the plan step. was. The plan was to call her. There you go. Follow it step by step. You, you It's one step. Call <laughs> this person. Yeah. Call the shoe, the dog, and the uh, you know the race car to come save me. I thought this was kind of cool though. How they so the bad batch goes there. They leave. Uh, there's a big argument between like should we leave because she's being hunted, which makes perfect sense. Uh, yeah. They set Omega to keep her behind. I thought this was interesting because when you see the scene and this is the robot, they end up running into a robot. It reminded me of these two things from the comic book. So I thought they're kind of homages to like. When you first see the other, the non bad batch, the real troopers jump off. And obviously, that cover appearance here on 37, where you see him come out to. I thought it was kind of hmm. reminiscent of that. Hmm. Plus, we need to put more slides on. So I did. Uh, <laughs> uh, I did think it was cool how they baited the droid this time, which was pretty interesting. They used the bait, but then they did it twice. Like you did it once. How many more times are you going to do it? But they did the whole thermal detonator thing that we've seen before where the droid comes out the C-3PO trap thing. Well, the, sec the second time she baited herself. They yeah. didn't do it. She, she right, right. That's herself. actually a throwback to a Lego C-3PO scene, which was kind of cool, but whatever. I mean, is what it is. A great plan if C-3PO came up with it. Well, they, they weren't really the master strategist that, uh, yeah. you know, Omega is. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. All they had to do was put on Stormtrooper uniforms and nobody would know who they are. They could have walked around the place freely. I, just which is, I was uniforms. thinking the whole time is why aren't they wearing why don't why don't they just take some of these stormtrooper uniforms with them and just come out in stormtrooper uniforms because yeah. they could do it. They so could it anywhere. there is the little back and forth about like uh echo um you know he's running he's saving a separatist and the separatists are the guys that tortured him and like cut off mm -hmm. his arm and all that type of stuff so i guess there was that little emotional whatever and they would whatever it's the Monopoly man. Now we got Stu Younger here, um, the card pro, or as you say, Bobby Fisher, the yeah. uh, chess pro, uh, where they take a little juvenile and the mafia decides to use them to gamble. Yes, go look up Stu Younger, best card player. No, go look up Josh Waitskin. You'll, you'll enjoy that movie more. <laughs> I don't think they made. Oh, yeah, maybe they did make a Stu Younger movie. Searching for Bobby Fisher was a. Either way. Either way. So we've got the kid who's a gambler because they're great at strategy. Sid Actually, uses it. To... Might be more. I'm doing okay. We're... <laughs> Sid uses her obviously to pay back the debt that they all owe. She does so because uh, she's a master strategist. I like this where he gives her the shoulder. You know, I mean, you've got oh, yeah. Hunter. Hunter's talking like this isn't good or whatever, and he goes, "Hey, Bob," gives him the little the little shoulder. Like, watch what you say about my sister. And uh, you know, there you go. That was pretty it. So I did this little faded thing where he's like, "Oh, he's angry at first, but then he sees her." And how sad she is. And then he's like, oh, maybe she's actually doing well. So I will challenge her to a game. And if she wins, which she will beat me, then she can go on the rest of our chess. And that's the end. I didn't even have time to redo the last end page. But she'll be going on the rest of the missions now. I hope I didn't taint anybody's opinion of this episode with my opinion on the episode. But we will start off in reverse order. Because Solo Wookie, I would be surprised if he gave this episode more than a one. Solo. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I, I 2.5 and the only reason he gets that is because the action scenes were were really pretty good the action scenes were thought out and planned out i thought well um it does show a bit of their covert ability and and, and a, ability to get in and kind of do some sneaky clone awesome stuff so that's it two five <laughs> Okay. You think that's why they didn't bring Omega along? So they could do they have be more covert. Well, I mean, so they could be more covert and you know, I don't know. They were it like seems weird that they brought her along on everything else. But. Dude, I, sorry I didn't get that out, but they were half bent over because I didn't have enough time, but they were half bent over. They weren't really hiding. They were bent over 
in the middle of a, a courtyard, not even going during the the day. Yeah, Same. right, bright day in dark in dark yeah. armor when everything is light. <laughs> yeah. Everybody else is wearing white. They're wearing they white. Would, <laughs> they would <laughs> definitely get the uh, the metal Metal Gear Solid exclamation mark. If you stand in the middle of a courtyard, all you got to do is hunch over, and people just boom. <laughs> no. It's like a Scooby Doo behind the tree. I was surprised we didn't get the the uh, Rob Liefeld, uh you know, the gun post. Scene. This scene right here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Needed the uh, xylophone when they were sneaking around. Yeah. <laughs> oh, jeez, oh, Pete. Uh, anyways, JJ, go ahead. What do you got? Uh, I'm gonna. You know what? I'm gonna give it a three. I I was I was two and a half, but I I liked the ending. I liked the chess thing. I know that was kind of just kind of thrown in there but i kind of always figured omega would be the one to get them out from under sid's mm -hmm. grasp or whatever you want to call it so i like that they kind of finally resolved that issue um but yeah i, I give it a three and the action was not done terribly it was done well i don't it, know if it was so good though well it was it was not the best we've seen we'll put it that way but i didn't think it was that bad i do I find it three. this is what i love about this part of the show Everything that Solo says, somebody says the complete opposite, and then somebody's going to say the complete opposite of somebody else. Like He gave it a two and a half or a three, which is fair enough. I, I, I'm not debating the grade on it. But he's like, yeah, the action was great and everything else, and they were so covert. The first I thing didn't think like, it was that no, bad. No, no, not covert. I didn't think it was that bad, but well, good. All right. Jedi. There's just a couple of the tank scenes, the action scenes that yeah. I really... Yeah. The rest That's of it, it was like... Eh. Go ahead, Jedi. What do you got? So uh, first, let me, let's just get this out of the way for the viewers. At the time of this recording, my wife has not seen it. Oh, right, so let's uh -oh. just get that. Let's just get that out of the way. <laughs> okay. So, but I have. Uh, I, I, you know, I, God, I feel like I'm echoing exactly what JJ just said. Uh, I wanted to give it a two and a half because I thought it was a filler. Uh, but you know, as far as fillers go, it was a decent filler. Uh, but at the end, I always love the interaction that interdynamic uh interaction between omega and the bad batch and that the at the very end that interaction family type interaction uh between them i i found a little touching i liked it i thought it uh definitely gave it so uh a three i'm it's going to be my score uh just because of that ending scene and the fact that omega was able to get them out from under the thumb. Not, I mean, not that it's she's been terribly terrible to them, but out from under her their indebtedness to uh, <sighs> Lizard Lady. I can never think of her name. Sid. Uh, Sid. Sid. Uh, and now maybe they're free to do other things other than her little, you know, errands. They can like you know start focusing more on who's out, who's who's out for Omega. Why? How? How do we get this? price off her head or whatever um so yeah uh three for a lot of the same reasons jj said excellent all right what do you got pete all right well you guys again you know, you, you swayed me a little bit and got me to also add an extra half point to what i was initially going to say because you did remind i did like the tank action stuff like that that stuff bit was kind of fun but while it did feel a bit like filler I do still think they did move the story forward in a lot of ways. Getting out from under Sid, uh, while you would think, hey, maybe we should sideline Omega, not bring her on these missions, they quickly showed, you know, going to get away from that. So they thought about it. They're not going to do it. She has her uses. They could have used her. He even thought she was there. He was said, you and Omega go do this, and she wasn't there. Like Hunter even screwed that up, thinking she was there. But I still thought they moved things forward with that. I love the family aspects too of how they're getting closer knit and how their you know relationships are you know growing. So I'm giving it a three and a half. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna be the highest score so far because I was gonna give it a three, but reminding me not all the action was goofy because yeah, some of that stuff was kind of silly. Uh, gave me that extra bump to give it a half. Excellent. So <clears throat> I'm. I know I called it filler. And the only reason I'm not giving it, uh, I'm going to give it a three. The only reason I'm not giving it below a three is because of this. If they didn't do the last part where she moved that on, if yep. they extended that to another episode, it would have been mm -hmm. completely filler, right? Yeah. But you're right. Now it gives us an option where it opens up for the rest. So it's like a conversion in the arc, right? We're at like episode whatever we are now. It's going to go over it. Now they can open it up so they can 
explore more things, including maybe going back and finding Rex for a little bit and everything else. This one actually at the end had a ton of story moving, but it was five minutes of story moving and the action mm -hmm. I would debate with all the people that said the action was good. They stunned <laughs> one thing and then they dropped it in there. And then like even uh, monocle McMonocle bags was the guy that like blew it up and none of it. He was like, okay. I mean, I would, I wouldn't say I found the action that great. Um, and it feels like they spent the first 95% of the episode just to get to that little point of having Echo help out a separatist, which is like, mm. you know, did, uh, okay. did anyone else, did anyone else think that when Omega was doing these odd jobs for a Sid around the tavern, uh, just killing She was Tyler teaching her karate. Her. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> But no, I, th you know, for part of me, and I think it played out better the way they did it, but part of me was like, God, I would love to see her like just wandering around, exploring and finding that Boba Fett helmet in her office, <laughs> the white one, and just kind of mm -hmm. like looking at it and being like, yeah, maybe even trying it on or something. I thought that would have been for, for fan, for fan fic, fan. Dumb. Isn't that a, isn't I that a super that commando? Cool. Isn't that, I know we call it the white Boba Fett one, but isn't it yeah. technically a white Superman commando? No. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Is I mean, that not what that is? Bo okay. Boba Fett's prototype helmet. Yeah, yeah. Because didn't they? <laughs> didn't at one point they called that the white. They called it the Super Commando helmet. Like the, I don't know. Either way, yeah, but yeah, that would be cool. That would have been cool. It still can happen. Maybe, maybe, maybe she can bounce back, fall backwards, and it fall down off the shelf and hit her and just drop yeah, her. Yeah. You know? Yeah, you know it would have been fun uh, because she's force sensitive. It would have been fun if she found a lightsaber. <laughs> she's not force sensitive, dude. <laughs> Jeez. I don't know. Her skill is strategy, and I mean, it's true. whether or not that's her own only skill, we'll find out. But she doesn't need yeah. to be force sensitive with Miyagi Do. <laughs> Episode one was on, I think, late last night, and it had Qui Gon going. You know, he he can see things before that happens, just a split oh, second, which is why he can pod race. Maybe that's how she knows the strategy. Maybe. Maybe. See it. <laughs> maybe that, or maybe like a very scientific and intellectual species. Decide to focus on, I don't know, strategy. Uh, <laughs> that's what they do. Oh, who knows? Either way, <laughs> as long as we're not upset that they have named the uh, Boba Fett ship Boba Fett ship, I think we'll all be in good shape at this point. Yeah. No, we're, we're good with that. <laughs> yeah, we're good with it. Ha Han ship, Luke ship. Uh, the Millennium Falcon's all... different. I will say this. We've talked about it a couple times. Jedi's really disappointed with this, and, and I understand why. I, I, I do understand why people, because they read clickbait and they see articles and they have child actors kind of saying, like, they shouldn't change the name, even though they go, we don't think they changed the name. But when you're selling toys to kids and when you have kids that are young, they refer to that as Boba Fett ship. The same yeah. thing with the Bad Bat ship. They refer to that as Bad Bat ship. Lego is not the official maker of naming things. That's not what they do. Okay. Well, you're right. You're right. And, and as far as the uh, the initial news for the clickers out there that Disney was doing this, etc. I mean, that, that's bogus. It was just yeah. Lego doing it to to target their audience, or tar target their uh, consumers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I get it. Does it bother me a little bit? Mm -hmm. A little bit because I'm an old guy and you know I, I I don't change change doesn't come easy to me sometimes but well, it's not a change. I, I'm good, I'm, would good you have, with it? I'm fine with it. But but Jedi, my question is, if it wasn't for clickbait, would you even have noticed? Like because I would I wouldn't have known if Pete hadn't posted that link in our, our little uh, production <laughs> chat room. I wouldn't even have known. <laughs> yeah, my that's fault. what I'm saying. Like no, I know people would have known. Fault. And the only yeah. thing I'll say about it is this, like when my kids play with that, not the Millennium Falcon, which they do call the Millennium Falcon. And I, I tried to correct the kids before and call it the Slave One. But even to that, they're like Boba Fett ship because that's yeah. how they refer to it. It's not like the Millennium Falcon yeah. where they've used the name a bazillion times. So when you say like Han ship, nobody refers to Han ship as Han ship because it's not actually his technically either. He wanted it from Lando. And then technically, if you want to go back before yeah. that, not even Lando ship. But they refer to it as Millennium Falcon. That's one thing. Slave One, however, when kids refer to it, to mommy and daddy, they refer to that ship as, it's weird because Razor Crest is referred to as Razor Crest. The kids call it Razor Crest, not just mine. Like when you're in the toy aisles for all us toy hunters, 
The kids are calling it, hey, dad, mom, there, where's Razor Crest? There's Razor Crest. But when you see Boba Fett's ship now, should they have called it Starship? No. They, if you're going to call it a ship because you're selling it to kids, call it a ship. I don't know what the Starship thing is, but yeah. I just don't think that, that is the, that's the thing that we're all going to die on this week, considering we let Lucas change Han shot first. Which, if that's going to happen, uh, let's let's start it off there. Let's start off at the beginning while he's putting stuff into the movies that we didn't need because he's got new graphics and he wants to get Lucas Arts off the ground. Let's start there, and when we fix those problems, then I'll jump on how we decide to describe a ship that we're selling to people. Yeah, Max like, Rebo's yeah. band, that new song that they put in. Oh, yeah. My, my kids had to the age of six, and they understood and knew that. After the age of six, if you call that Boba's ship, you're grounded for at least a week. <laughs> Go to your room, you're grounded. Right, but but do know this. like When it's other people that aren't... I think this is one thing we should probably focus on, too. We need the fandom to continue. Okay, mm -hmm. So, for us to be upset about Han... Like, I'll, I don't yell at my kids that Han shot first. Okay, I don't yell at any kids that Han shot first, because like... Mm -hmm. It's not their Han will never shoot first. And like Well, the fact that I the fact that and I and we, I'm not trying to dog on, but no, I mean yeah. we kid each other, but yeah. uh you know, did it like I said, was 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 I kind of taken back like what? Why? Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. yes. But you well, know, you ask my you ask my wife, I get upset about 50 things a day. So just add, I mean, <laughs> it's just it's just part of being but in the mindset, they, I mean, they've gone ham. This has gone ham. And, you know, for a while there, it seemed like they had turned the curve on the toxicity and the clickbait because mm -hmm. the clickbait leads to toxicity. It really does. Like, mm -hmm. I know people try to, like, capture that word and use it for all types of stuff. Like, oh, this is toxic and these people need to be canceled and toxicity. No, the actual toxicity is when you use this clickbait to have people who have no, no arm in the fight to just get them riled up, get mad. Because change bad, me, no, no understand what's mm -hmm. going on. Look, the bottom yeah. line is no parent. How many people, you go to your next door neighbor, hold that thing up and go, hey, what is this? And they'll be like, do you know what this is? And they'll be like, yeah, that's Bubble Fett shit. They're not, the majority of people, even if they've watched. Yeah, so you're you're <laughs> saying you, I get it, but you're not anybody's neighbor. And if you are, <laughs> I'm on, saying, nobody's knocking at your door. There, so, there are occasionally that, small children on his lawn. So. Yeah, if, if I hold that up and my neighbor says that, I'm just fighting words. Yeah, no, I but, think it depends on the demographic that you're you – know, I mean, someone, yeah. someone my age or solos – or even, you know, well, I would yeah. say if you're Let, old lest enough – Lest we forget to, this – this franchise is 43 years old. Exactly. It's yep. going to have to grow and change over yeah, time. Yeah, what's yeah. iconic, what's iconic to us as people that have been fans for decades is not iconic to a person that's been a fan for eight years. Right, it's, but I'm it's just saying. not the same. I'm, I'm even saying before that, to sell to the casual fan, let's not make it a big thing where we're going, you're calling that the wrong thing. If they mm -hmm. want Bubble Fett ship, which is called Slave One, by the way, be like, oh, cool, Boba Fett said, hey, did you know that Slave won? This is why. Like, that's what you should be doing instead of writing articles of little Boba Fett who used to play him, who nobody gives a crap who that person is, said, yeah. well, it would be a shame if they changed the name, but I don't think anybody has. No, and put the headline being like, Bo old Boba Fett actor is upset that they changed the name. Now, how did they even find him? Is he like their barista at the Starbucks <laughs> in the neighborhood? <laughs> where where they dig that up? Hey, hey, that's, that's Boba Fett's uh, <laughs> ship. It didn't. And, and I saw yes, you on like, my yard last week. Oh, you that kid on my yard last he week. Knocked on Solo Wookie's door and he's yelling at some kid. <laughs> I didn't see any. Slave One, you little. <laughs> I didn't no, see any news on it, but if you ask a guy like Mark Hamill, who's been in it literally since the beginning, he probably doesn't care that much, or you know, thinks it's even a good thing. Like, you know, even inside the stars, the guys that make this stuff, there's going to be differences of opinion. <laughs> Which is fine. Do that gonna, look, yeah. man. I think if you ask this panel what that ship is called, is there anybody here that who doesn't call it Slave One? Yep. No, I mean, I. Yeah. Is there anybody who's I call not, it Slave One? Is there anybody who's not going to refer to it as Slave One? Yeah. From going. If you ask me what the name of the ship was, but if Slave you step one. outside our circle and you ask twenty people, you're probably yeah. going to get two people that respond. Is there anybody it. on the panel too that might say that that says that this is an incorrect statement? Slave One is Bubble Fett's ship. That's Bubba Fett's ship. No? Mm -hmm. Anybody going to say that different? So I don't see a problem. 
Actually, I mean, it's, it's Django. Django fits. No, yeah. <laughs> again, it's also a matter of who you're talking to and who you're referring to. Like okay. I know it's Slave One, but if, depending on who I'm speaking with, if I'm talking to a friend oh, who watches Star Wars and likes Star Wars, I'm not gonna say, "Hey, what did you think of Slave One showing up?" I'm gonna say, "Hey, what did you think of when Boba Fett ship showed up in yeah. last week's episode of yeah. Mandalorian?" Well, think about and when you I talk to the person I'm speaking yeah. to. Doesn't think about know when you talk to people of. about Mandalorian and the Razor Crest exploding. Yeah, you know, I talked to I don't know how many people about that moment, and ninety percent of the people are like. Well, what happened when you thought uh, Mando's ship blew up? Nobody said, exactly. "Hey, I, I really missed the Razor Crest blowing up." I actually <laughs> think I actually think that they did a better job with because the Razor Crest does get brought up brought up a lot. I think that they did a better job of marketing that name. Mm -hmm. But even on that, remember they screwed it up on the box the first time too. So like, yep. mm -hmm. there's nothing holy there with Lego and and the naming of things. I'm just saying like, let's not chase fans away because they call it Boba Fett. Well, if, if they call it Boba Fett, time out. If they call it Boba Fett Starship though. I, I might have a problem with that, but like <laughs> and, and at, at the end of the day, I don't. Yeah, know. it's Jefferson <laughs> Starship. JJ is making a great point. I mean, they they and so are you, Marco. That they they never really they don't call it Slave One until what until Mando, isn't it? I mean, that's the first time that they ever refer to it as Slave One, isn't it? Maybe when on do you film, ever, maybe yeah, yeah, on film, yeah, on film. Yeah, on it movie? is. On I don't film. think they I mean, ever Boba Fett said was kind the of name. A, well, Boba Fett and then, all the. Well, Boba Fett was kind of an enigma in some in all those movies, anyway. Yeah. Never well, got it would have had the only way, the only yeah. reason, but even that, the only reason you know the name of the ship is because of the toy. Like mm -hmm. that's where it came out. So, like, yeah. it's such it's such a like weird thing to do. That once again, I'm just saying we want to raise fans, right? Like uh, we want to. Star Wars is for everybody. It's not for you to hoard. And to do that, no matter what you got to do, you have to make it acceptable. Our show has seen that before, too. We got a lot less viewers when we were just being elitist Star Wars people, not even realizing it, <laughs> thinking that we thought people knew what we were talking about. Right. Right? I mean, yeah, just, uh, I there's there's yeah, JJ so. was in the chat going, Dead <laughs> on, this is the greatest ever. And like, there's like, going, what are you talking about, dude? What in the world? I have no clue what you're talking about. Right? And I've then, had a great time. I've had a great time naming other other ships since this happened just because i kind See? of a person i i'm a yeah. i'm a sarcastic son of a bitch so, no i like that i mean uh like on ship uh, that. The, death, the death star is now tarkin's residence uh, there you go <laughs> unfortunately for tarkin it was <laughs> it should have been tarkin's tomb that's what yeah. you See, and that's also where we miss Leaky. Leaky asking those questions, like, "Wait a second, what are you guys talking about?" Like, getting yeah. that extra level. You'll be there. back. Not everybody. Tarkin, Tarkin, Summer Home. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, but like you know, if, it got if really I, hot in there at one point. And you know, if I'm gonna up. get upset, if I'm gonna get upset with ship things, like you heard last week, I kind of questioned it really quickly and let it go by. I'm more mad about the Cad Bane ship. I'm more mad about that. Like, uh, sure. that's yeah. like, but I'm not mad really. I am. Mad there's a difference there too that they changed the name of the ship. Yes. Like it was one name and now it's another name. This they're just saying was well, Bubba Fett Star. They didn't really change the name. They changed the ship. Well, they though. changed the ship. They just took the ship. They out. changed the whole yeah. ship. Please, Matt, they changed the, the entire ship. That's well, true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They took the ship out and the name because the name obviously isn't. I don't know. I don't know why. I'm not going to say why till they figure it out. But I do know this: George Lucas. Every time I see him, I yell at him. Han shot first, and I will do that to the day I die well, or he dies, and I'll well, like I said, his grave. Han shot yeah. first, so I'm not. Well, like I said earlier, why is why is Anakin Hayden Christensen at the end of that? Yeah. all of a sudden, <laughs> like Luke's gonna recognize what he looked like when he was 20 years old. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. <laughs> like so, there's all these type of things too, and you can do it if you want to be like Jedi. Feel free to be like Jedi and name every ship something different. That's funny. That's fine. Right. That's not toxic. But going out there and saying. This is burning down the house and great fans. Okay, cool, man. Because I'll tell you, go celebration. And if we had celebration, I don't think anybody would give two, like, there's two craps about what the heck it's called. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And let's build more people so that those celebrations come back and they get bigger and bigger because they are, they're hella fun, bro. They are hella fun to mm -hmm. make celebrations. Don't ruin the future based on the present. Yeah, yeah. Like, if you happened. don't like it, you don't like it. And talk about how you don't like it, but don't ruin the future or poison it or whatever you want to call it or say i'm not going to be a star wars fan anymore there's good stuff to come still just because they changed the name of one ship is no reason to give everything up if they actually even changed it and i won't yeah. run you off but just yeah. realize cool. there's rules in my house you will call it but <laughs> this is name. this is why or nobody's knocking on you. your door it's not because <laughs> like you know it's, it's like they're like 
Hey, did you go? Hey, he's a big Star Wars fan over there. Yeah, but he's also crazy as shit. Don't go over there. He's all angry and yelling at people about staying off his rocks. Come on, don't, don't do it. His rocks. Well, nobody's gonna ever ask you. That's why they changed the name. They changed the name because of Solo was because they went out and knocked on people's doors, and the normal people said that's Boba Fett's ship, and they said there's a super fan over there. But he's crazy because he yells about staying off his rocks and something about a water, harvesting water. I don't know. Okay. Anyways, that's our PSA for the day. I hope it made some people feel better. We're probably going to get some hate mail on that one. That's okay, man. Yeah, that, that would have been a good conversation, I think, if we were doing this live. I don't, so. I don't think so because it would have gone on for like three hours. And people yeah, that's it so already went on for like three yeah, hours. Yeah, you would see okay. the sunset behind me. <laughs> Both yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's it. Speaking of that, uh, I'm getting texts that they need more gas for the boat. So I need to go and put gas in the boat. So we're going to take off, guys. You guys have a good one. I hope you had a great holiday. We will see you next week. It will be live again next week. Uh, by the way, Jordan, speaking of people who are trolls, don't call people and leave messages. And if you do, if you do, you can call me. Because next time you do it, I'm going to call your mom. <laughs>